Hey, let's talk about you guys, the Locked On Spurs fans, and what are y'all commenting about? And then bring in our guest, Hector Ledesma. So we discuss are the Suns cautionary tale for the Spurs in their rebuild. You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, welcome back to Locked On Spurs. We're here on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you all back. Hope everybody's having a great work week. Hey, it's hump day. Almost there. Stretch work week begins. We'll get you through it right here on Locked On Spurs. As always, we thank you for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. Free and available wherever you get podcasts. Google Play, Stitcher. What is it? You got Ken's 5 Plus app. Uh, YouTube. I mean, seriously, pick a platform. We are there. Hey, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get themselves 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed. That's 150 bucks, win or lose. You want to visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Hey, what are we talking about today? Well, we're going to be talking about you guys first. There's a couple of Locked On Spurs fan comments you guys are leaving at the YouTube page. And then bringing our guest Hector Ledesma uh, with Valley Sports. We're going to be discussing if the Suns, how they were constructed, a cautionary tale, not the blueprint that the Spurs should follow in their rebuild. We'll hash all that out in just a few seconds. But first, you guys, what are y'all talking about? The Lockdown Spurs YouTube page. Let's get into it. I'm going to pick two, and then we'll move on. The first comment is from Ramon Punsalang. I hope I said that right. Uh, thank you, Ramon, for leaving a comment here. And he is reacting to the uh, last Lockdown Spurs regarding Chris Paul. He says, does he, Paul, have a championship ring? Enough with undersized talent. Spurs need to upsize to beat Denver in a playoff series, not just a one-off game. Yeah, look, um, it's funny you bring up undersized talent because you look at a guy like Jalen Brunson just tearing it up for the Knicks. Uh, you know, there's a guy who's undersized for NBA standards and just doing a bang-up job. Now, granted, I know Apple Oranges, Brunson is at the peak of his career. Chris Paul is at the tail end of his career. but you know, there is some valid points to bringing in Chris Paul. Look, Spurs need a veteran point guard, right? Check. They need a guy who's a floor general. Check. They need a guy who's been there, done that. Perhaps a guy that kind of gets on the team and uh, gets on these young Spurs during games, close games. And we saw a few times last season, especially that Philly game, remember that double overtime game fell apart uh, due to turnovers. Trey Jones had some turnovers. Wim Victor Wimbayama, he had turnovers. But bringing a steady hand like Chris Paul could solve it. I'm not advocating for Chris Paul. I'm just saying that for those that think that adding Paul CP3 is a good idea, there's some valid points to it. Uh, but you're right. You know, this is, um, you know, uh, you know, Denver is a big team, you know, but I think the Spurs are years away from giving Denver any trouble in a playoff series. Spurs got to get in the playoffs first, let alone the play in to even cross that bridge. But thank you, Ramon, for leaving that comment. But yeah, you know, he doesn't have championship rings and there's that too. You know, has he ever guided a team to the promised land and win it all? Not yet. He's not retiring and Vegas does think that the Spurs have the best shot at adding him next season. We shall see what the Spurs are going to do, especially with the draft lottery, draft itself, um, the free agency. We'll see. But uh, I think it's a little too uh, premature to start thinking CB3 is coming to San Antonio because you got to look at this too. Does he want to come to a rebuild situation? Gotta think about that. But thank you, Ramon, for leaving that comment. We appreciate it. Next comment is from Jonathan Luck. I hope I said that right. L-A-Q-E, -E, Q, I guess. But thank you, Jonathan, for leaving a comment. Uh, he's reacting to a Locked On uh, episode where we talked about the Spurs trying to chase either Trey Young or DeJounte Murray. Here's what Jonathan had to say. He says, my gut says DJ DeJounte would be a great fit with Wimby from a basketball stand only standpoint. As far as the DJ online beef with some Spurs fans, that was a bit overreacted on both sides. Uh, so thank you, Jonathan, for that. Yeah, you know, you more you talk it out, it just makes more sense the Spurs would target Murray versus Young. Not to say Young is a phenomenal player offensively, but defensively he lacks. DeJounte will give you offense. He did average more than 20 points per game last season with Atlanta, but he gives you defense, something uh, Trey Young does not provide. And he's also taller. Hey, don't forget, he's also an all-star, too, and he is a veteran, and he's not old. He's, uh, he's you know, entering, or he is in his prime years. He understands the Spurs system, Popovich. You know, I'm pretty sure a one-two punch or with him and 
Wimby or him and Vassell. I mean, it, it does make sense. You know, his contract is not astronomical. And yeah, I think he would be a good fit. He would understand that it's Wimby's team, not his as well. And guess what? You'll probably have the automatic, you know, light cord built around moving forward, depending on what they do with Keldon and Jeremy. You would have Wimby, uh, Vassell, and DeJounte. It's not a bad little trio right there. Uh, but yeah, you know, I would not be surprised if the Spurs were to bring back Murray. Look, they reports said that Spurs were interested in him in the uh, trade deadline last season. There's another report coming out that the Spurs, uh, NBC Sports, I believe, are rather, ta- they would rather target Murray versus Young. So, some, you know, what they say where there's smoke, there could be fire. But I would not be surprised if I wake up one day, see that the Spurs made a deal for Murray, bringing him back. For, all, for, for me, it's just about the price tag. You know, what, what does Atlanta want? But no, Jonathan, I agree with you. I think DeJounte would be a good fit with Wimby. All right, there you have it. It's a couple of Spurs fans leaving their comments at the Locked On Spurs YouTube page. Make sure to do that as well. Go there right now on YouTube. Just search Locked On Spurs. Subscribe. Leave a comment. We'll talk about you guys in a future episode. All right, what's next? we got Hector Desma on deck. We're going to be discussing whether or not uh, the Phoenix Suns, you know how they brought all that talent from, you know, that and, you know, the Booker and then the got Duran and then they got Beal and all that good stuff and they, they flamed out right is that a cautionary tale for the Spurs if they want to bring in massive talent if they go that direction well we're going to discuss that that's next right here on Lockdown Spurs hey, I want to talk to you about DoorDash do you want to make mom smile start Mother's Day with flowers or surprise her with gifts from the brand she loves delivered the very same day with DoorDash Moms are a gift. Give her the best this Mother's Day. Get gifts as thoughtful as she is with DoorDash. Select from hundreds of expertly crafted bouquets, uh, you know, from the best of tech, uh, self-care essentials, and so much more delivered right to her door. It's never too late to show mom your love this Mother's Day with DoorDash. Surprise mom with flowers, gadgets, everything she needs, all in one spot delivered right to her door. Hey, does mom have a sweet tooth? DoorDash can help you with that. What about tech gear, workout gear? Yep, DoorDash can help you with that as well. Uh, Look, get those thoughtful gifts that she deserves and the convenience you need. Choose same day delivery or schedule a week ahead for when those flowers can get to her all, you know, right on that special day. And the gift should arrive to her door with DoorDash. Hey, start shopping now and save and make her proud with a Dash Pass membership. You'll save with a $0 delivery fee, reduced service fees on eligible orders from Dash Pass merchants that meet the minimum subtotal. Other fees, including service fees, apply. Terms apply. Get all your Mother's Day's gift all in one place. Get 50% off your next order up to 15 bucks when you spend $15 or more on your next flower, convenience, grocery, or retail order. Now with code locked on NBA. That's locked on NBA. Order using DoorDash today. Terms apply. And I want to talk about FanDuel. You want to go to FanDuel right now, everybody. Look, NBA playoffs are underway. NHL playoffs are in the way. You know, they, they got it all. MLB's in action right now. Look, it's winner take all in the NBA, NHL, and FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get themselves 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. You heard that right. That's 150 bucks on bets on spreads, money lines, player props, so much more only on FanDuel. Look, I have it. You should get it too. Sure, the Spurs are not in the playoffs right now, but there's a lot of action going on. A lot of thrilling games, opening round games that are just so intense. Cleveland, Orlando, you know, the Knicks are just having a good um, opening round series. You know, Denver has advanced. Needless to say, you can have so much fun with the playoffs, even though the Spurs are not in it, with FanDuel. You want to visit FanDuel.com slash locked on right now. Make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Hey, this is Hot Rod. And I'm RC from Cybertron Spurs. And you're listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. And look who is back, everybody. He is Hector Ledesma joining me here right here on Lockdown Spurs. Make sure to follow my next at Hector Ledesma TV, the off-season edition with Hector. See, Hector, you know, the Spurs may be in vacation, but I'm still bothering you to join me, Lockdown Spurs. Can no, you never believe that, man? Can you believe that? 
Never a bother, buddy. It was good. It was good. It was good to get the text from you. It it, it, it took me back to the uh, the grind of the regular season. So no, no, yeah. never a bother, bro. Hey, well, you know what? Uh, even though the Spurs are on the off season, a lot of Spurs fans are still thinking about the silver and black, and that's exactly what we're going to be discussing about right now. Your Spurs. It is rebuild mode still for your San Antonio Spurs, which means a lot of picks, a lot of draft. Uh, you know, compensation they've been getting from the trades. Players, financial cap room, they got a lot to do with to do. And they can make a big splash or they could take it easy. And I guess, Hector, why why I brought you here, because I want to have this discussion with you, is we know the Spurs can make major moves. Heck, they can make big trades and they still won't hurt them. But then you have the Spurs and the rebuilder trying to figure out their path. And then you have a team like Phoenix who was loaded with stars from Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, Bradley Beal. The list goes on and on. And yet again, they fall short in the postseason. Hector, as the Spurs get through the rebuild, and hopefully they'll come out of it sooner than later, do the Suns serve as a cautionary tale for the Spurs in this rebuild? Yes. And not only, and it's easy to say now, right, Jeff, now that they've, they're out of the playoffs and the whole nine and it's, you know, as they say, hindsight's 2020, but beyond the Suns, NBA history in general tells us that top heavy teams are a very cautionary tale. Mm -hmm. I had to think long and hard about this and then kind of, you know, look through the nuances and look at specifics. Honestly, I think you have to go back to the heatles. LeBron, yeah. Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh with Miami. You have to go back to those teams for the last time, throwing mm-hmm. together a top heavy unit where the you know you have multiple top 10, top 15 mm-hmm. players on your roster. Right. When that's worked. And that sounds crazy, right? Number one, because talent wins in the NBA. And then number two, right. that seems to be the trend, right? All these stars want to play together. Re- recruiting guys so that they can go, they can go chase championships. It hasn't worked in, in the last 20, 25. If you make an argument that the eighties Lakers and the eighties Celtics were more organic and I get that the Celtics right. didn't draft, you know, yeah. Robert Parrish and Dennis Johnson. And I get that the Lakers brought in Kareem Abdul-Jabbar via trade. But if you want to make it, you can make the argument. They were more organic and were, they were more whole teams. Even going back to those days, Super mm-hmm. teams don't work when it comes to the ultimate goal, winning a championship. Look at the last couple of years. Right. Denver, Jamal Murray, very good player. Is he top? Is he a top 10 player in the NBA? No. No. Mm-hmm. The year before that, the Warriors, the aging version of the Warriors, yeah. right? By the time they won that title, they were reminiscent of the 2014 Spurs. They don't they win yeah. that title. They don't win that title if just if they're just simply relying on Steph, Clay, and Draymond. By the time they right. won that title two years ago, Wiggins, Poole, other different guys, you know, had 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 grown into a spot where they were contributing to Golden State. Before that, the Bucks with Giannis. Is Chris Middleton a top 10 player? Is yeah. Drew Holiday a top 10 player? No, yeah. they're like Jamal Murray and and Michael Porter Jr. They're that, you know, the very good and they fit wonderfully within your dynamic, but they're not. 2020, the AD LeBron Lakers, the bubble, you know, championship, you can make an argument. You can make an argument. Well, they're kind of a super team, right? The Lakers brought in uh, AD. Well, there was only two of them. There was only two, which just kind of seems to be the success of the NBA, right? Two guys who are your guys, maybe one dominant and one guy who's just kind of underneath that, or maybe like a 1A or a 1B. But still, even that Lakers team, remember, they had Danny Green, that, you know, Rondo was on that team. They had guys who were, you know, Caruso. The guys were were contributing. You know, it wasn't just by the time they got to their third or fourth best player, you were looking at that roster and going, oh, boy. You know? So you look, you, so, so basically, Jeff, I can stop now just going through the history, but yeah. the point is, is a collection of stars, three guys, and then it doesn't matter who else we fill out the roster with, that hasn't proven to work outside of Miami, you know, mm-hmm. by the time you got to, you know, the Heatles, by the time you got to those 
you know, uh, kind of role players, there was a significant significant drop off, right? Mario Chalmers, yeah. you know, uh, Chris Anderson, you know, an mm. older Ray Allen. Shane Battier was a nice piece, but he's exactly that. He's a role player. You know, uh, Haslam. You had to go back to that team for the last time, a top-heavy team that you looked at the rest of the roster and you went, eh, eh that those yeah. teams want, you know, that that, that yeah. kind of a team won a championship. You know, I, I hear what you're saying, and yes, and I'm, I'm going to speak for the fans that say, no, do something now. Because, again, just to reiterate, the Spurs – are going to be loaded with draft picks, not just this offseason, but future drafts to come. And, of course, the players they have on the roster. So the I, if, you're, if I'm speaking from the Spurs fans' point of view is, no, the Spurs have to do something now. they got to bring in the Stars because teams are lapping them right now. The Pelicans, they're, they're coming if Zion can stay healthy. The Thunder, they lapped them. Houston is right on their tails. Dallas is going to be Dallas. The Spurs are behind now, but... That's where Spurs fans get frustrated. We know you have all you have a bunch of stuff that you could do. You could make this team competitive right now, a la the Suns bringing in that star power. What about that argument to saying, like, hey, the Spurs are getting lapped right now? They got to do something now. And the quickest way to do that is to bring in the star power. Well, in laying out that going top heavy hasn't worked in terms of winning an NBA yeah. championship, I'm not suggesting you don't do anything. Okay. Uh, I'm not suggesting you don't try to add a star this offseason. I mean, the Spurs' only star right now is Wemby. It's not like the Spurs have Wemby and Devin Booker on their roster yeah. right now. And they're trying to figure out, well, do we go add a Trey Young to those two? That's not where they yeah. are. It's Wemby, and it's a bunch of young, yeah. good players some are better than others, right? Devin Vassell, I think, is mm -hmm. obviously the Spurs' second-best player right now. Right. Jeremy Sohan, I think, has a very bright future in the NBA. Um, you know, at to what level? We well, That's a discussion for another day, right? Yeah. Can Jeremy be another Draymond Green? You know, or or is he a different kind of a mold of, of player? You know, Keldon Johnson, we we often talk about how he hit, he has hit his ceiling. Well, if even if he's at his ceiling... It's not a bad ceiling. The guy gives you almost 20 points a game, you know, per night. The, the point is, is none of those guys right now are stars. Can Vassell, can Dev be a star two years from now? Can Dev be a star next year? Mm. Maybe, but maybe, maybe yeah. but, but, but it's a maybe, right? Like you don't look at, you don't look at Dev right now and go, man, that guy is on a fast track to be, a Halliburton or an Anthony Edwards mm. to go even to more the extreme. You don't look yeah. at Dev in that regard. So you're left back with Wimby. Wimby is your only star. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not – it's two different things to say the top-heavy teams don't work and, well, the Spurs shouldn't bring in a star. Those are completely different okay. points. Yeah. I yeah. think they need to make a move, and I think they'd be served – to make that move sooner rather than later, as in this offseason. And truth be told, Jeff, I think they will attempt to make major Me moves, too. if, you know, I, moves I, being plural. Yeah, I, I hear you saying about running the back. There's a part of me that thinks that they might. They might. No, they won't, Jeff. If, let me, man. let me, okay. The let way me they it, ended that, 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 that the season, there was a lot of we're coming back, we're coming back. Well, you they, know, they've got to say that. They, they've got to say that. The, yeah. the players, and as far as the players are concerned, they believe they're coming back, yeah. right? Like they're not believe they're not already looking like, well, well I'm going to get traded. They don't know. They got to believe they're coming back, and they do. That it's it's their lives, right? But let me let me phrase it another way. When I said okay. they're not going to run it back, Jeff, let, let me phrase it another way. If you see a very very similar roster starting the next season that we did this past season. Mm -hmm. It wasn't because they didn't try to make a major okay. move. Right. Now, they might try to make a major move, and what, what they're getting in return, they don't maybe just have the leverage just yet to get the kind of deal they want. And so they look at that mm -hmm. and they'll go, you know, getting rid of Del Devin and Keldon and several picks for that guy, not worth yeah. it. And so they yeah. don't pull the trigger. But it's going to be that scenario would be the reason why they quote unquote run it back. But even yeah. in running it back, even in running it back, even under that umbrella, Jeff, they're going to add some pieces 
It's mm-hmm. not going to be like, okay, everybody's young again, and we're yeah. and we're checking to see what these guys can do and how they fit around Wemby. They did that this season. They're not going to do two years of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there, there's no way. I mean, we're looking at what already going on five, six years of sub 500 uh, records already. Um, right. You know, that's unacceptable. Here's the other thing, too. What what the the twist on this power team a la Suns in San Antonio worked better than it did in Phoenix because of Popovich. You know, Frank Vogel, you know, rumblings that he's done in, in Phoenix. But yeah. could Popovich be that glue type coach to keep a power team together? Yeah, I mean, oh, I mean, over and over, and we saw it with the most recent players poll from the Athletic, right? Like they, he was Pop. Pop was number two. He's number won two, that yeah. poll several times before he, he mm-hmm. Spolstra was number one. But Pop's still up there in terms of guys that 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 uh, coaches that guys want to play for. Now, here's the thing: someone watching this or listening to this might say, "Well, that hasn't done them any good, Hector." Like in terms of the past couple of years of bringing in guys. Well, no, because guys would like to play for Pop, but not at the expense of losing 60 games. They'd look sure. at the roster the Spurs had over the last several years, and they would say to themselves, "Why am I going to sign there? Like I'm I'm going to go through a losing season when I can sign over here and mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera." Well, now you add Wimby to the mix. And, and 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 you and and you look at the assets the Spurs have in terms of a move could be made and moves further moves could be made once said player might get here and yeah Popovich becomes again you know an intriguing option mm-hmm. because at the end of the day in terms of that in terms of players coming to play for San Antonio he's a positive he's not a negative in that regard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Spurs are starting off their rebuild well. If we want to consider early phases because they have be in the Wimby's there okay good it didn't take too long they got their centerpiece now building off which makes me believe that the Spurs man see I know I know what you said about running their back Hector but just yeah Devin and him look like that's a nice one-two punch right there that you can build around perhaps Devin is you know I'm not going to compare him to Monty or Tony but in that ilk like he is going to be that solid complimentary player with Wimby. You can take those two with the rebuild. What if that's the issue here? What do the Spurs really have? Two pieces. We don't know. We're, we're all glowing about Wimby, but we're not there yet with Devin. But what if Devin is that piece? The, the issue right now in Devin being that piece is if he is that piece, those two in and of themselves might win you a couple of 2-1-2 games in the NBA. The problem yeah. is the rest of the roster as constructed, if they run it back this following year with the belief that Wimby and Devin are the two best players, then, you know, that's that's a net of maybe plus 10 wins, which gets you to 32 wins. You know, so now you've got through, and, and again, yeah. right, I'm being very... I'm, and, this, I'm, and, and 32 I'm not, even... I'm not, not using... Yes, and 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 yeah. maybe you're like you're competing for the play in until like late maybe, mid yeah. mid to late March or whatever, you know. Uh, the 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 point is is that you've now would have had your first two years of Wimby's Wimby with twenty two and thirty two wins, and in today's modern NBA where the rookie contract is not the window's not long, like you have the three yeah. and then the player option, right? And then mm-hmm. the fifth year you can offer him way more than anybody else can. But essentially, you've got four years in terms of you yourself having him under contract based on just what you as an organization choose. I don't think they want to go through another season that more or less is kind of like this one. I know they don't. Um, And so you roll the dice doing you, you roll those dice. If you go into next year with, okay, Vic and Devin are two best players, unless Dev Mm -hmm. makes an incredible leap. To mm-hmm. which maybe we haven't, and, and he does reach, healthy. and he and he stays healthy, and he does reach he's that healthy. Halliburton level. You know, he does yeah. become Anthony Edwards light, but that's yeah. asking yeah. an awful lot. Like you're asking mm-hmm. a whole lot, you know, for for that to happen. And so, um, I think that's why they're they're gonna look to make a major move so that they don't have to go into the year hoping that that's the case. Just one year removed. Right. From you know, from where they're because you know, I'll put it to you this way, uh, Jeff. You can make the argument 
that Devin Vassell can be, and people might not like this analogy because of the difference in their games, but you can make the analogy that you can say Devin Vassell could be a Chris Middleton type player. He could be that type of good. That ceiling, yeah. He could be that type of good. And that's a discussion that you can have. And and here's something else too to think about before we go to break is sure, we're looking at the roster construction and you know, looking at the Suns is okay, is that a was that a bad idea? Spurs don't follow that blueprint. But the biggest wrench I can see that could kind of halt the rebuild a bit is if Pop decides to hang it up. If Pop decides to hang it up, then who's next? Is it going to be a new style? Is it going to be a new coaching staff? Right, you, right. You know, there's right. all that stuff. But I think that it can halt the, the the progress at the rebuild. I mean, I get it. The, the rebuild is in its infant stages right now. We're not even near the middle part yet. But – that's just something to look about. You know what? But well, let's continue this chat. Okay, let's continue this chat. And then we're going to look at uh, other factors in the rebuild and then look at teams that are in the playoffs right now that the spread could emulate and say, you know what? Yeah, maybe that's what we need to be doing. That's coming up next with Hector Ledesma. Follow him on X at Hector Ledesma TV. We should do that right now. And when I talk about Monopoly Go, all right, game off. We got to pause here to talk more about Monopoly Go. I know what you're saying. Flag on the play. You already talked about that, but there's so much good stuff in this game. In Monopoly Go, you can team up with friends for time tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. Uh, the more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock. There's so much more to get. Unique stickers that you can trade with friends to complete albums for big prizes. What about cool new places to travel the boards with? Hilarious emojis for taunting friends when you smash their buildings or just heist their vaults, but that's fun. Plus, Monopoly Go, yeah. Look, feels so new, it's exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique mini games like Diggy for Treasure or Robot Pachinko Machines. Look, there's always new timed events that help you win big with massive multipliers for everything to win or rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go, so go. Right now, go get off that bench, get off that couch, go download it right now. It's for free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on. And when I talk about Muslingers Drive Through Coffee San Antonio, go there right now, 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive. That's in the 281 and 1604 area. They got it all. Big menu, friendly staff, proud local sponsor of Locked On Spurs, proud community member of San Antonio, serving San Antonio the best drinks in the city. Look, you need a cold brew, they got it. Latte, they got it. You need dairy alternatives. They got that too. What about a signature drink like the Muslinger coffee? Go get that. Their menu is so extensive and it even includes mini donuts that are very, very popular. They even sell out. That's how good they are. They have it all. Look, they have a line called the Lightning Bolt series that includes the Alien, which is a, kind of a hat tip to Victor Wimbayama. Go get it right now. But just a heads up, they're going to start using Lotus Energy. Now, they'll have Red Bull uh as a backup but the default is going to be lotus energy it's seven power plants packed with goodness it gives you the flexibility it gives them the flexibility to create new drinks but just a heads up if you want red bull in your lightning bolt drink they'll honor that but the default is going to be lotus energy look power your day with lotus energy seven power plant extracts it'll get you going throughout the day like they got it all. You want to follow them on social media at Muslinger S A T X. Open every single day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. You heard that right. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive. Go there right now, San Antonio. Go there. Drive through. Go get yourself a drink. Try the OG OJ. Trust me. I, I highly recommend that one. So they got it all again. 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive. Open every single day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Go there right now, San Antonio, because life is too short for a bland coffee. And we're back right here on Locked On Spurs with Hector Ledesma. Follow him on X at Hector Ledesma TV. He is a Spurs writer for Clutch Points and a Bally Sports contributor uh, covering all things from the Spurs during the season and SAFC. Make sure to check that out. He'll talk about that in just a few minutes so you can check him out doing his thing on the television. By the way, when we're talking about the rebuild and you're talking about building around Wimby and everything, you know, Hector, I thought you were going to say Mamu was the key to building <laughs> around Wimby for a second there. I thought you were going to say Mamu. Ma Ma uh, and Devontae Graham, just what yeah. they did the last two weeks of the season or week and a half, just yeah. do that all of next year. Yeah, do that all next year, Mamu and uh, Devontae. All right, what are we talking about? We're talking about the Spurs. And we kind of have been discussing at the Suns, at least that blueprint that they tried, 
is something the Spurs should avoid. You know, that's not the blueprint. That's the cautionary tale. Spurs, yes. you're in the rebuild. Don't overstack with so much firepower. But there are several teams in the playoffs right now that the Spurs could possibly pattern their rebuild. You know, wow, I remember it wasn't you were just years ago, just short years ago, it was the Spurs that everybody wanted to follow the blueprint. Now the Spurs are looking at the modern NBA and the teams. How can they build it like that? And you brought up a team right now, uh, Minnesota with Anthony Edwards. Look at that team. That's a good example. Yeah. Anthony Edwards is a blossoming star. He's having a coming out party. He is going to be one of the faces of the leagues right now. But yeah. outside of uh, Anthony Edwards, that's pretty much it. And Rudy Gobert is a good player, but he's not a star. So there's that. Nas Reed, no. Good six man, but not there yet. Then you Cat, go to Denver. Cat is their second best player. Yeah, Cat, Cat, thank you. Cat is their second. But, but okay, that would be my point. One, two punches. Cat, yeah. a, a, Anthony Edwards. You go to Denver. It's Joker and Murray. Yeah. So perhaps the pattern here is don't overload on superstars. Just find that combo. That's why I was bringing up Devin Vassell in the last segment. And then build from that point. But we talked about Devin, but it sounds to me, Hector, you don't feel like as far as a one-two punch that the Spurs are not there yet. No. No, okay. I, I think – and 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 again, like Devin's still young, right? Like he's – I mean, he came into the league when he was – I think he was 20 when he came into the league. And he's, yeah, he and he's, really, and he's, and he's just now going to enter his, his fifth mm-hmm. year next year. So, yeah. you know, he's still growing as a player. But I think just one year later from what we saw, like, because it, it's pretty obvious the growth is going to be incremental. So, like, for example, the difference between Devin now and Devin when he came into the league is 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 huge, right? The difference between Devin now and Devin last year, and I know he was hurt. When I mean last year, I don't mean this past season. I mean last year, right? I know he end, last last season got cut short because of the the, the scope on the knee, but – he wasn't like leaps and bounds and, oh, my goodness, who is this guy better than the year before? He was better. It was good to see. He added a lot of things to his game. His offensive bag is be- was simply better than it was last year. But if you take that incremental growth and you add that, forget Devin Vassell like the name. Just the game and just one year difference and you put that next to Wimby and expect that to be the second horse, it kind of fits the definition of insanity. Like, right? Like, insanity, what, what's what's the old saying? The definition of yeah. insanity is you do the same thing over and over and expect to get different results. Like, yeah. why would you expect a different result just one year later? Like, what about the Spurs and, and Vassell's game leads you to believe that after what we've seen for four years, one year later, he's going to be – a guy who's going to, you know, uh, you know, be this, be this, be the the second yeah. banana to Wimby on 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 a Western Conference, you know, play deep playoff run, you know, and and I think with Wimby having taken the strides that he did in just year one, if you're the Spurs, anything short of gunning for the playoffs next year is is putting the bar way too low. Like you already mm-hmm. have Wimby who. In year one, like from October to March, increased at a, a bettered his game at an exponential rate. You have to be thinking we can make noise. Yes, we, we might not be think, thinking championship come October, like championship or bust for the season come October, but you've got to be thinking beyond, well, let's see where we are around the play in. Well, let's yeah. see if maybe, yeah, maybe you know, this team's going to be good enough to, to be a 17 or a 6 seed. That might be the reality when we come to October. But right now, as you enter the offseason, you got to look at Wimby and go put pieces around him because right now he's good enough with the right mm-hmm. pieces around him to make some noise in mm-hmm. a playoff picture. Yeah. Um, Denver's established. We know they, they're the defending champs. They're rocking out right now. They look pretty tough but then you look at a team like okc you know they got shay gilgis and yeah. a uh you know a blossoming uh williams uh i forgot the uh, J- jaylen williams, williams. williams yeah jaylen williams you know coming on the scene pretty well and giddy yeah. eh, you know so so right uh, lou dort a defensive stopper 
And you got Chad Holmgren, who is coming along as well. Right. Um, again, OKC, remember the Spurs old adage, built, not bought, built, not bought. Yeah. That was, was we are built, we're not bought. Um, OKC is doing that right now. Denver is doing it right now, built, yes. not bought. You, you make certain moves, but you don't overhaul. Right. So should the Spurs continue that mantra, built, not bought, even though, Hector, they got the assets to bring in a, a heavy hitter? They can They can talk to, I'm making this up, Milwaukee. Oh, Dame. I'm using Dame as example, everybody. That's right. all. I'm going right, after right. him. You know, Dame, what do you want from him? We, we can do that right now. Let's make a deal. Oh, you want a few draft picks and a young player? We can do that. You need cap space and some cash, throw cash considerations? We definitely got that. Here's that. You can look across the landscape of the NBA and be, NBA teams be, okay, where's a team that has a player that's iffy? If they want Donovan Mitchell's one. That's, 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 that's right. right, right there. You can bring in that top power player. The thing about it is that I said I see where fans get frustrated. They're like, you can bring in this now. You don't have to do the but built not bought. And why, Hector? You hit it earlier because do you want to go with another season, especially with a Wimby of a 20 something win season, a 30 something win season? Wimby wants to win now. How much does the Wimby effect impact the Spurs moving forward as he heads into year two? It's everything. If okay. if if Wimby look, Wimby's gonna say one thing to us, right? Hey, it's yeah. cool yeah. that the franchise consults me. I'm just a player. He's got to yeah. say that. He's got to say that. Yeah. If Wimby goes goes to Brian Wright and, and has already gone to Popovich and says, we when we start October, this roster needs to look dramatically different. That's yeah. that's the end of the discussion. Pop. Brian Wright, RC, and the other guy and the other front office uh, powers that be, there might be a discussion there in terms of, well, Victor, we're thinking about this or we're thinking about that. If they don't already completely agree with Victor, there might be that discussion. But ultimately, that's a ball game. If if Vic walks in and says we need yeah. to make major changes, and again, if the changes don't come, it's not because they didn't try. This is my point here. The one thing that I think Spurs fans should not focus too much on is fit. And some people are going to look at me and go, what are you talking about? That's the entire yeah. ballgame. I'm like, looking at you I, right now. you got to fit with Wimby. Okay. Don't put so much emphasis on fit that you overlook how good a player is and what a player could be once he's actually here. Think of it this way. The 89, I, I love doing this, right, when it comes to Spurs, but it's true. Like, like the past can be prologue. The 89-90 Spurs, they add Robinson in his rookie year. They overhaul that roster. Yep. If Twitter existed back then, I could see people being like, Terry Cummings is an awful fit hey, next to David you, Robinson. The Maurice Cheeks, that's an awful point yeah. guard. The Spurs need a point guard who can get up and down the floor. Now, ultimately, the Spurs traded Cheeks for Rod Strickland, right? But it wasn't yeah. because Cheeks wasn't a good fit. It's because Cheeks didn't want to be here. You know, he didn't yeah. want to be in San Antonio. And, and they happened to be lucky to get Rocket Rod, who fit well with that nucleus. You know, w Willie Anderson and, and Willie Anderson, I mean, what did he do but score points in his, in, in, on a bad team in his rookie year? Why did they bring in? Had fit really mattered or how is he going to do this and how is he going to fit in a pick and roll with Wimby? I understand the game is different in terms of the way, the way the game is played. But at the end of the day, talent and cohesion and the way you fit together on the court trumps all of that stuff. And so I would suggest to Spurs when they look at perspective guys that might be out there or that might be targets for the Spurs either via trade or via free agency – don't get so caught up in, well, how does he fit and overlook how good a player that guy is? Yeah, uh, I, I hear that. And it was begs the question now, so where should the Spurs be projecting towards? Should they be projecting towards, yeah, I got to use the extreme, Phoenix, load up on firepower, because they have the capability to do that. Or should they take the longer path, a la the Thunder, the Magic? Look at the Magic. The Magic is another good example. Where do you stand? Go all in, a la the Suns, again, using that extreme? Or let this 
kind of cook a bit in the in the oven and see what we do in the next four to five years. Because that's been pretty much the path for Orlando and the Thunder, and to to degree, you know, no, even the even Denver, the Joker even said it took them about five six years to get to where they are now. Um, I I really don't mean to take the easy way out here when I say this, Jeff, but I think it's got to be a combo of both. But okay. I can tell you, and this is not taking the safe route. I I will tell you this: they can't just let it cook. They can't just let it. That's they yeah. can't like. The, they're getting lapped. Roster, they're getting lapped right now. They're getting lapped. I, I, yeah. Well, this roster, okay. as it as it is, let's say they are still together in three, four years. Does anybody honestly really believe that this same roster three years from now is a championship contender? No. 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 They're not. They're not. No. Uh, unless unless Jeremy and Devin become, you know. Fantastic. Oh my goodness. Yes. Either all-star or all-star caliber or, or maybe not even all-star caliber. Like I was referring to in terms of earlier, in terms of how super teams don't win or super teams that are hollowed out at the bottom don't win championships. Your third guy at least has to be, you know, some way, somehow a guy that is vital to you and is vital in clutch moments, very much like a Manu, you know, during the, during the, uh, you know, as he got older, you know, during the Spurs success, when they started making deep runs again, once Kawhi came into the picture, right? Like you, you, you need to have guys like that. Um, is, is, you know, is anybody in their roster going to be anything along those lines? And so because you don't truly believe that you've got to add a major piece somewhere along the line. So may, maybe the best comparison, Jeff, like as as I as I look at things is if we're lo- doing comps, maybe the best comparison is the Bucks from three years ago, right? They traded for Chris Middleton. Drew Holiday was an in-season trade. Mm-hmm. Some of those guys, like Giannis, were drafted, you know, by, by the Bucks. But by and large, that was a combination. Mm-hmm. I think... Because of where the Spurs are, I think you need to make the moves. Where, 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 where the OKC analogy falters a bit is who on the Spurs right now is Jalen Williams? Mm. Who, if if Shea, if wow. Shea, if Shea is Wimby, right? Like obviously different style players. But if if yeah, if, the, if, if the yeah. alphas, if, if their alpha is Shea, okay, and, and Wimby is the Shea, well. Who is the Spurs' homegrown? Yeah. The closest you got is Devin. That's the closest you got. That's 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 yeah. the fault, you know, <laughs> for, for 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 better or for worse with Giddy. Giddy can give you know Giddy Giddy's got some game, you know. He he he. There's there's moments there where he you know mm-hmm. he kind of reminds you. Oh, okay, all right, you know, not not a bad not a bad fourth or fifth option to have on your team. Mm-hmm. Who's who's the Spurs giddy? Like, I guess, you know, you could say Keldon Johnson is that type of guy or, or, or what have you, whatever. But the, the point is, is that's where the fault with the OKC. OKC looked at that roster and goes, our issue isn't just talent. Our issue is youth. Right now, the Spurs are trying to figure out, in addition to our youth, just how talented are our guys? How good can Devin Vassell be? How good is... Can Jeremy Sohan be? And oh, by the way, the backdrop is is that we're only guaranteed four years of Wimby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think my opinion. I think the Spurs. I think they're going to make a move. I, I don't think it's going to be a blockbuster move. I don't think it's going to be stop the presses, breaking news on all the sports networks, all that stuff. But I think it's going to be one of those significant moves that pushes the Spurs. I want to say not overnight out of the rebuild, but maybe you start seeing hope like towards the um, after the All Star break again. You know, next season, like okay, this 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 acquisition is being paid off, and it doesn't have to be a star power name. It doesn't have to be a Trey Young, a Donovan Mitchell. What if it's a Dejounte Murray? What if it's a Dejounte Murray? What if it's a, a Tobias Harris? What if it's you know those solid glue guys? veteran young players that the Spurs need and you know it, you know that's where I think they're going to go I think they'll go that route it's not going to be a big sexy move but I think it's going to be like oh that's a really good move the Spurs did uh 
and also too, and, and a lot of this thing too, Hector, for me is this the sticker prices. I need to know what the sticker prices are. I can't see the Spurs right. mortgaging everything for a Trey Young. I can't see them do that. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and and to give an analogy to to uh to 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 give an analogy to a different sport, everybody talks about the 90s Cowboys and how they, they built their dynasty through the draft. Yeah, yeah. They built the, the Minnesota, the the Vikings Herschel Walker trade didn't make the Cowboys dynasty. It gave the Cowboys the opportunity yeah. to create the dynasty yeah. because oh, none of that hop it happens if Jimmy Johnson doesn't pick the right players along the way. So yeah. your draft capital is only as good. And honestly, Jeff, if we're being really honest with ourselves as Spurs fans and Spurs followers, we've seen that play out in real time. Like mm -hmm. Josh Primo isn't even on the roster anymore. You know, mm -hmm. we're looking at a guy like Devin Vassell, who was just outside the top 10 a couple years ago. And we're still trying to figure out, is he without a doubt, a good second banana on a championship team when guys taken in that same draft class after Vassell are already, we know, second or first bananas yeah. on their playoff teams. Yeah. Sohan, we've had two years of Jeremy. He's a top 10 pick. He was. Can, can, can you look can, can you know, again, for all, for all, for his skill set and for his abilities, can you, all things considered, wipe away the name Jeremy, take away Spurs. If I'm to tell you, you took a top 10 player and two years later, he's he's versatile. But at the end of the day, he gives you 12 points, seven rebounds and six assists. A top 10 pick. What's your reaction to that? And he's doing and he's doing those numbers for a bad team. He's, he's not like helping yeah. you win. Yeah. You know, if you will, he's not helping uh, you win in large numbers. My, yeah. my, if we're being honest with ourselves, your answer is, yeah, that top 10 pick probably didn't work out so well. Right, right, yeah. And and that's why the Spurs are still in a rebuild. That's why we're looking at the right. landscape of what the Spurs need to do. And one thing I think Hector and I can agree on, going the Suns way may not be advisable for this young Spurs team. May well, not and, be. And, 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 and I hope I covered this at the very beginning yeah. when I went through this, Jeff. I think – I. It, it's part it's it's hand in hand right it's part of the problem of, of being of, of having a lot of stars i don't yeah. think having a lot of stars in and of itself is the problem it's in the reality of the nba with salary cap and having the stars and meaning that after you get those top three you have almost nothing that's the issue that is the, issue. About, that's the formula the that hasn't worked like like in other words in other words I'm not saying that if a team went out and put Luka, Giannis, Jokic, and Bede and LeBron together, that would be awful because that's too many stars. No, yeah. no. What what I'm saying is, what if you have three guys at the top? What is the rest of your your you know? Because because <laughs> to go back a little bit, stars can figure out a way, and they can eventually, given a whole season, they can find their footing, and eventually, talent is going to win. Maybe it might it might yeah. not, but there's a good chance you'd rather be in that position than be, yeah. you know, a, a team that's a, a roster that's barely going to win 20 games. But yeah. the larger issue beyond the star power, and again, it's hand in hand, it's understood within the reality of the NBA is when you're top heavy, your 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 sixth, seventh, eighth, heck, a couple of your starters aren't very good. They're not starter yeah. material, but they have to be because your third best player is commanding so much of the salary cap. Hector, if I'm if I'm rebuilding the Spurs, you know, I'm looking for the still that as you mentioned, second banana to Wimby. I, I'm hoping the Spurs look at look at Hector Ledesma, bring him in for a tryout. Me? You, think you got it? Hey, you, you you got it, Hector? No, man, no. Your days are your all. playing like, days are my, behind you. Yeah, my playing days are well behind me. My uh, the the days of of uh, hoops at the the Snake Pit at Central Catholic are long gone. <laughs> you, I think your days, your playing days are, were were. I'm gonna comp you to Terry Cummings. How's that? Oh, I was actually I wasn't this big in uh, in high school. I was actually I was a guard, so <laughs> okay. I, didn't, I didn't have the I didn't have the uh, as, as my as my mom says is all the little the the all the little Mexican mamas in San Antonio. I wasn't Yanito yet. <laughs> yeah, you weren't there yet. You weren't there. He is Hector Ledesma. Make sure to follow him on X at Hector Ledesma TV. He is with Clutch Points, Spurs writer, as well as Bally Sports. Hector, tell us what's going on with your world right now. Uh, just because the Spurs season is over doesn't mean you're still churning it out. And also, 
doing things for SAFC. Yeah. Yeah. So, so thank you for that, Jeff. So uh, on the first, the Bally side thing, you're, you're so kind. Thank you for, for uh, mentioning that. So I'll, I'll do stuff with Bally's through the Spurs end. So I just want to make that clear for anybody who's thinking like, you won't see me on a, on a Bally's Rangers broadcast or a Bally's Mavericks, you know, broadcast. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's through the Spurs and our partnership with Bally's. So included in that, obviously, you know, everyone knows they own San Antonio FC. I'll be doing play by play for their game this coming Saturday. They're here at Toyota field uh, facing Oakland. Um, and so doing play by play for that game, you know, again, doing stuff for the Spurs uh, on the Bally side of things. And then the clutch point things continue. Yeah. Thank you, Hector, for taking time out in the off season to talk with us here. Locked on Spurs it's going to be a good episode. I hope y'all enjoyed it. And uh, we thank you all for making Locked on Spurs your first listen each and every day. Free and available wherever you get podcasts. You get a Ken's 5 Plus app. Where else? iTunes, Spotify. Pick a platform. We are there. We'll be back tomorrow. More Spurs talk as the offseason continues on. We'll slow down eventually. Just not there yet. But for Hector Ledesma, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Lockdown Spurs.